1974, Southern soul singer Candy Staten released her fourth album, simply titled Candy, and from it, the track Your Opening Night. Okay, uh, D minor, G, C major 7, um, A, A minor. That's why you're so unhappy on your opening night. I know when you walk on that stage, you're going to come out with a smile. Sumptuous acoustic arrangement going on here. Well placed harmonies right there. The Hear that synth string just uh, kind of rising up in the background. Oh, I like her, uh, the, the way she kind of swells up but is restrained all at the same time. And, and um, that, that, that very uh, distinct uh, rhythmic pattern we had going on there with the hi-hat. This has one of those like rhythmic patterns that would be interesting to just hear for a moment on its own, like, like a, a, a rather creative one, let's say. Yeah, it seems to be going like a uh, like to, uh, like like tight hi hat, then then a, a light roll, then. Okay, this seems to be. Uh, I guess it's about um, somewhat a, a, a male singer who's. Um, having quite a premiere and yet it's kind of there's a taste of melancholy uh to it because he just ruined a relationship right beforehand right before he go he, he just broke up with someone right before going on stage uh, virtually when we were together baby you were Okay, so he cheated and now he's regretting it. Now she's deserted you and you wanna give it another try. Oh, I love the way she stretches out just lightly, but she she's uh, uh got that like restraint and yet you, you you know that she's kind of like a virtuoso, but she um it just kind of comes out sort of naturally without her um, hitting you over the head with it. We are hearing, let's see, Moog Synthesizer by Barry Beckett, who's credited with Electric Piano Piano and Moog on this, and he has a lot of credits, including, uh, yeah, uh, Clarence Carter, uh, uh, Candy's uh, husband at the time, yeah. Or um, she was married to him for three years. Uh, I divorced him the year before this album came out. But I can't take that chance, no. And I'll tell you why. Oh, baby, you had my arms when you needed them. You had my lips to kiss the night. You had my encouragement when things weren't working right. Oh, I love that. Uh, that, oh, well. Anyway, the, the rhythm I gotta just point out again. What was that sound that was just coming in? Yeah. Um, sounds like an electric uh, trumpet, if there was such a thing. No, 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 no. Um, the Muscle Shoals horns are accredited with horns, but no, 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 no. 
that that sound. I, maybe that's like a trumpet setting on a moog. <laughs> I hear those shimmer. Well, the, those kind of like luminous, uh, like like kind of sunsetty strings that are just sus holding that sustain, like in the background, just a little bit thicker than before. I love how the harmonies emphasize the major seventh when it lands on that C chord. That was Your Opening Night by Candy Staten from her 1974 album simply titled uh, Candy. Uh, um, yeah, she, uh, her prior album was uh, self-titled, and it's, uh, it creates a bit of uh, search confusion sometimes when... Um, D Diana Ross did that. She titled one album Diana Ross. She titled another album Diana and another album Ross, and sometimes coming up with the right self-titled album. Confusing. Um, yeah, it was because of the, it was because of that confusion that I was not able to include a cover of this album in this collage of 1974 album art that I did oh uh, months ago. Yeah, be, because uh, there was only one page of returns uh, that it would give me, and uh, and uh, it was bringing up the 1972 album. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's hear another track from the album Candy. The track. Can't stop being your fool. Okay, uh, D minor once again seems to be a, a key center that works quite well for her. And once again, we have a really creative, distinct uh, drum pattern here. Um, yeah, who is giving us those um, drums as well as? Uh, tambourine and kabasa are credited to Roger Hawkins, who, um, oh yeah, he co-founded the Mus Muscle Shoals Sound Studio in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Yeah, the place makes sense to record. Um, uh, uh, Candy yourself being an Alabamaite, uh, Alabama, or is that Heather? <laughs> to uh, B flat. Now we got kind of a 60s uh, Stax Volt kind of sound going on here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of like a 1968 vibe from this. We got that tambourine, you know. I can't stop being Uh, people don't often notice the tambourine was really omnipresent like on a lot of 60s recordings like particularly like Motown and I guess uh, some stacks um, even uh, like some Mersey beat it it um it kind of gives things sort of a trebly feel um, that was suited to like a AM airwaves and such at the time it was less prevalent during the 1970s though N not something you would typically encounter like in the in, in like Philly production Sometimes I tell myself that I'm through with loving you and I'm so worried till it comes to telling you. I'm wondering if some of these let's see who um we have a range of writers, but I'm wondering if the choice of material may have been somewhat inspired by her divorce. Yeah. Um because, you know, you, you don't have to necessarily be the author of a particular track in order to, like, oh, relate to certain types of numbers during particular times in your life. I can't find the strength to say what I say behind your back to your face because you know I love you and I can't pretend. Okay, 
Uh, backing vocals on this are provided by, I guess, two uh, female groups. Yeah, the Cowlets and uh, the Joint Venture. Oh, and the Joint Venture are actually given identities because they actually record in their own right, record a couple of singles. Um, or, let's see, aliases, Rhodes, Chalmers, and... Oh, oh. Charles Chalmers, Donna Rhodes, and Sandra Chalmers. I guess, oh, the, I guess three, I guess uh, three siblings, yeah. Yeah, two sisters and a brother. And they, some of them anyway, were on um, Boz Skaggs' is My Time. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah, they've all got quite a few credits to their names. Anything for you, but please don't rub it in. Let's, uh, let's just say an understated uh, sax part right there, just part part of the uh, muscle, muscle shoal horns. Um, I, uh, I I goof there. Uh, a brother, a sister, and um, a third wheel. Yeah, two Chalmers and a Rhodes. Nobody has to tell me. Okay, I guess that saxophone is by Harvey Thompson, who uh, yeah has uh, tons of credits going back to the late '60s, including albums, uh, the Patches album by Clarence Carter, uh, Communication by Bobby Womack, um, and a few of um, Candy's prior titles, and even um, uh, the Smokestack Lightning album by ex uh, Spooky Tooth vocalist Mike Harrison. She has just like that right amount of grit. It's uh, not too overbearing. Uh, it's just, it, she can be both kind of uh, smooth and yet kind of gritty at the same time. It's, uh, she, she's a hard, um, she's kind of uh, really one of those singers who, who's so understated at times that you have to really kind of like pay attention and to, to, to soak in her, um, her vibe and her, um, and, and, and the music is just, I, the reason I keep on, on coming on the music is because it's just as prominent. Like on a lot of, a lot of these recordings, like, like soul recordings of the seventies, um, the, uh, the backgrounds are kind of like mixed down to bring the singer to the fore, but, um, here everything's just kind of equal. Yeah. So I, I've, been coming on, uh, I guess, the, the vocals and the, the instrumentalists like an in equal proportion. Yeah, once again, I'm getting kind of like a, six, a late 60s vibe from that backing track, kind of a proto-funk uh, feel to it. Yeah, that was Kenny Staten with, Kenny Staten with uh, Can't Stop Being Your Fool, and before that, your opening night from her 1974 album, simply uh, uh, titled Candy. I was going to say Christian name sake as opposed to namesake or surnamesake yeah um and uh yeah uh her album career went back to 1970 um when she put out two albums back to back and then um let's see two years after this she put out young hearts run free which scored a huge hit in the uk with the title track which should have been a higher charter here it only made it to number 20 but um Every time I, I've, I've been so lucky as to, I, like, I, I can play it at home any time, but when, sometimes it, I've heard it come on like a DMX, and, and I, it just makes my day. Like when I'm at a supermarket or something, it comes on. It, 
that that song could be kind of like a soundtrack to certain moments in my life when I was younger. Yeah, she, and she was prolific, uh, pretty much an album a year up through 19, from 76 to 80 anyway, um, in like the soul funk vein. And then um, at some point in the early 80s, um, switched to pure gospel music. And um, that went on for a couple of decades, I guess. But um, she returned to making uh, like more secular, like soul funk music, like about a decade ago and put out a great album just like last year. Yeah, she still got at, at age 78, put out an album. And I recommend that you go uh, uh, try out some of the samples. Yeah, um, yeah, she can still belt it out and good young backing musicians behind her. And, and yeah, it's as if, uh, you know, press of a button and it's 1976 all over again. Yeah. Uh, Candy uh, Staten, yes, one of the uh, most prolific and uh, reserved and just uh, classy uh, soul singers of the 1970s, particularly, and, and uh, keeping some of that uh, that Southern soul vibe um, alive, like uh, during a period where I think kind of the emphasis tended to be more, um, say, like, uh, well, Philadelphia and, and more kind of toward the more uh, orchestral end of soul, yeah. Keeping keeping kind of more of that 60s flavor going in the 1970s. Yeah, for more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of Candy Staten, see the directory of albums by American soul artists linked in the description below for Red Hot Tracks and Purples from all of her albums from uh, 1970 to 1980 and uh, many other uh, soul acts from the 70s and 80s, over uh, 950 uh, title strong going upwards over like 10 pages yes like and subscribe follow me on social media and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tracks we just heard the layers the instrumentation the vocals the lyrics the intensity the vibe of it all yeah which moments stood out to you and until next time this is Aragon the world's most ear traveled trimaximalist signing off